Okay, let's start with what happened in Russia. How unusual was that in terms of size and impact? Well, we don't know precisely how common that would be. All we can do is sort of look back at other sort of reported such events. Uh, for example, there was an air blast that happened in the airspace over India and Pakistan back in the 1990s, which happened to be, occur while they were in tense conversations about their nuclear buildup of armament. And so uh, such a blast mimics greatly what would happen with a nuclear blast. It's, a, it's an instant deposit of energy in the atmosphere. And so fortunately, we were able to tell them, we, I mean, people, my scientific <laughs> brethren who study this, uh, we were able to tell them, no, that was not somebody's first strike. It was actually a cosmic event. Uh -huh. And so that was in the 1990s. And uh, if this had happened over the Pacific, uh, nobody would have noticed. Is it in so fact, is it in fact of, happening all the time, uh, this kind of thing? Yeah, so, yeah, so something of this magnitude, uh, we might imagine, is uh, perhaps once a decade. I mean, if, you, if it one happened in the 90s and one happened now and you fill in for the areas of the Earth where it would not have been noticed if it did, uh -huh. for example, the North Pole or Antarctica or northern Canada where hardly anybody lives, uh, you could easily sort of hide one of these from anybody's view simply because of the large swaths of area on Earth's surface where no one inhabits it. And so I could imagine it would be once every five to ten years. And what exactly is it? You know, what, what is a meteor and what, and what is an asteroid for that matter? Yeah, well, okay, we can go back, yeah, uh, Asteroids 101 um, in the solar system. Actually, I have the solar system on my tie. Um, <laughs> this is not drawn to scale, but you have your sequence of planets going from Mercury all the way out to Neptune. And uh, between, Mer between Mars and Jupiter, there's a swath of countless chunks of craggy rock, uh, which we call the asteroid belt. Now, a subset of these have wandered from their belt, we call that the main belt, and have orbits that bring them dangerously close to Earth. And we have collectively described them as near-Earth objects. You can call them near-Earth asteroids as well, but we want to include in there comets that might come near us that perhaps don't begin their journey from the belt. And so there's tens of thousands of objects that are dangerous, as dangerous as what we saw this morning in Russia, that whose orbit crosses the orbit of the Earth. Now, we cross the street all the time, the same street that trucks drive on, but we're not hit by trucks because we're not there at the same time and the same place. If you do the math, it turns out that eventually Earth and anything that crosses our orbit will collide with one another eventually. So these are the ones we want to keep track of. The problem is the little ones. The one in Russia was a little one by cosmic standards. They're so tiny you can't see them until it's too late. That brings us to that asteroid 17,000 miles away. That was, how unusual is something like that? How much in your scheme of uh, dangers, how dangerous is something like that? Well, in the past decades, we've gotten better and better at monitoring asteroids that kind of invade our space, if you will. And up until today, our, we were, you know, the, the invaded space criterion was, does it come closer to us than the moon? Uh, the military now calls that cislunar space. It was a new word to me even just a few years ago. Cislunar space is the, is, is the region between us and the circle that is the orbit of the moon. And so... We've been monitoring asteroids that have sort of been whizzing by in that zone for at least 10 or 15 years. 